All right, in this video, I'm going to be showing you a trick for converting numbers between the binary and hexadecimal systems. So as a precursor, right, you can always go through the decimal system when you're converting between any two bases, right? You could go from base 3 to base 10 and then base 10 to base 7. Um, but because the binary and hexadecimal systems have bases that are a power of each other, right, 2 and 16, there's a trick we can use to convert more easily and more quickly between them. That happens because every single digit in hexadecimal can be represented using four digits in binary or four binary bits. Our smallest hexadecimal zero fits in four binary bits just fine. That'd just be four zeros, right? Obviously three of those are overkill, but it is still technically correct. Our largest single digit number in hexadecimal, F or 15, can also be represented in four binary bits, which would all be ones. So if we have a hexadecimal number, let's say we've got the number A, nine, seven, B. Instead of converting this and going through and saying, okay, I've got B or 11 in the ones place. I've got seven in my 16s place. My 64s place has a nine in it. And then I believe it's my 256s place has 10, right? I could convert all this to the decimal system, but instead what I'm gonna do is skip that step and just convert each of these digits completely on its own and then concatenate the results to make a larger, in this case, a 16-bit binary number. So we could start with either end since we're going to do each of these independently. So we might start with A. Now, if you remember, A in the hexadecimal system is 10 in binary. Well, let's just write this out for reference. In the binary system, we have a 1's place, a 2's place, a 4's place, and an eights place, right? We're only gonna use four bit numbers, so we don't need to go on beyond that. And if we wanna make 10, well, we're gonna take an eight and a two to do that. So our resulting binary number will be one, zero, one, zero. And right, we're occupying the eighth place, but not the fours, the twos place, but not the ones. To make nine, we would make an eight and a one. So our number would be one, zero, zero, one. Seven, Right, we would have to put a zero in the eighth place because that's too large, but if we take four plus two plus one, we'll get seven. And so what we're gonna do is put a leading zero and then three ones. It's really important that we include this zero, however, otherwise we're gonna shift other parts of our number off by a digit and the number is gonna be completely wrong in the end. So each of these has to correspond to four binary bits, whether we need all four spatially or not, right? We're gonna keep any leading zeros. B or 11, it's going to be made up of 8 plus 2 plus 1. So we would say 1, 0, 1, 1. So the hexadecimal number A97B can be directly translated to this longer binary number without ever going through the decimal system. And the same thing works in reverse. So if we were going to go through, um, let's say we had a, we can take this same binary number, right? Same thing is true in reverse, where if we have a binary number that's long and we don't want to bother going through the decimal system, we can go directly to hexadecimal. So let's try it with another number. I'm just going to make up a few digits here. Okay, let's say we had this long binary number. And you'll notice that it's not an even splittable into fours but that's okay because just like any number we can pad with zeros on the left side without changing the value of our number of course if we added zeros to this side it'd be a different story but here we can add the whatever number of zeros we need to make this binary number break evenly into sets of four then we can carry out the same process in reverse each of these sets of four bits can be directly translated to a single digit of the hexadecimal system and then those are just concatenated to make a number so we could start at either end. Might be easy to start here. We can see we've got 0, 0, 1, 1, which means we've got the twos place and ones place occupied. So those are gonna add up to a three. Three in hexadecimal looks just like three in decimal. Here we've got one, zero, one, zero. So that's an eight and a two or 10. And we don't wanna write 10 here. That's the decimal representation of it. It's gotta fit in a single digit. Luckily, each of these numbers can fit in a single digit in hexadecimal. In this case, 10 is a. Here we've got one, zero, zero, one, 
or 8 plus 1. So that's going to be a 9. Looks the same as it would in the decimal system. And then we've got 1, 1, 0, 1, right? Or 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is going to be 13. So if you remember, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12. That means D is 13. So this is a D. So this binary number is exactly equivalent to this hexadecimal number. We didn't have to say, okay, I've got a 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s, 32s place, 64, and go all the way out to whatever place that is. Right? We're able to just do it in small chunks where we don't need a calculator um, because we're always working with numbers that are 15 or less. I hope that helps.